Good morning, everybody. It is June 12th, Tuesday, and I hope this day finds you well and good. And if nothing else, maybe we can give you a good start to the day. I hope you got your coffee and um, sit down, relax a little bit. It takes me time to get the story out or the lesson through or the message out. So, you know, just kind of relax and enjoy uh, everything. If you have any questions or comments, please leave something. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's anything in here that you think might help someone, please share. And with that, I thought today We would talk about things most people, a lot of people don't talk about. We're going to talk about the darkness. Yeah. We're going to talk about the shadow side. We all have a shadow side. What is the shadow side? Well, the shadow side is pain. Yeah. Um, when we act out, we act out pain. Everybody does it. Everybody, even me. I mean, I <laughs> You know, I have worked through a lot to where I try to, like, be at a place where I have no reaction anymore because I have um, worked on a lot of healing, so I'm not triggered. And that's what it's called. If somebody says something or does something and it makes you have fear or anger or anxiety or stress of any kind, you can trigger it. And so in that trigger you may find a lot of emotions that come up that disturb your mind. The water will literally rise up, you know, and you'll be in your head thinking all kinds of thoughts. And this is what we want to talk about today. Triggers and our, um, our dark side. It could be depression. It could be things that we have been through in our lifetimes that we have not worked out logically or reasonably or been able to figure out a lesson that was in it that we could implement into our lives and move forward. And that's what we want to talk about today. How do we recognize these things? Well, we have to sit with ourselves first and we have to um today's a message that i've been writing down over the last few days okay so i know it's coming from god because this is about love and this is about being of the light and being of the dark and being able to bring the two together to where you're one whole person because we are light and we are dark we have things in the darkness that come up out of our mind out of our heart that sometimes can disturb us disturb our day make us angry make us frustrated make us look at people in strange ways that aren't full of love and compassion and we want to get to a place to where we can heal our pain and that we can look at others with love and compassion because knowing that they're in pain as well is why they're acting out and so if we can heal ourselves and become above that pain and hurt understand why we went through the pain and hurt understand that suffering is not what we're here to do we are here to actually uh, reach an emotional level of intelligence emotional intelligence not intelligence emotional intelligence where we can feel our way through life with joy and happiness so we want to clear the darkness we want to bring the darkness out look at it see and examine what's going on with it we're going to take this and this is dream time creation it is time to work on your own self in a way that will bring you out into the light you are no longer triggered you are no longer upset you are no longer freaking out and all is going well in your life we will never be 100% perfect because if we were, 
life would be boring and apathetic, you know? I mean, can't you imagine just being perfect all the time? But we don't want to be depressed, and we don't want to be sad. We don't want to be angry. We don't want to be anxious. I got it all wrote down here. We don't want to sit in apathy where, you know, we're not doing anything at all, and no good thoughts come into our head. Um, we don't want to be fearful, afraid, you know, afraid for our life, afraid about death. Because to tell you the truth, there's no such thing as death. No such thing as death. That, that's not true. Because we come back again, life after life. And in working through your dark side, you will begin to see that you may carry fears that are even from another lifetime that don't even belong to you at this time. You see this? This is creation. It never stops. You know, it's all in a circle. I, I just want to see as the Creator blows out its feet and it goes all through around in this circle of a whirlpool right here, we can see that creation never stops. So when we are born, we age, we grow, we pass through this life into a new life, and we come forth out into being born again. So what we learn in this life, we take into our next life. And that is how, um, how the cycle works, because energy cannot die. You're, the energy inside you is a spark that will never go away. It just goes off into another place to wait until its cycle comes that it can come back down and be born again in the world. It comes down through the world and you're born again. The world. The world and the world are one and the same. And this is how life goes. And what we learn in this life, we take with us because the, the light or the vision that glasses before your eyes, before you die, where you see everything you've ever done in your life, that you take with you into the next world. And that is what we study and go over and think about and decide what we want to accomplish when we come back in the world again. So many people do not see or understand that they are the light, the light of the universe, the light of God, and they are mixed with darkness, and that finding the light can shine through the darkness. The darkness is your power. That's who we are. We are dark, our, our material self. It is the power of the spirit because you are grounded in the flesh. You see? Ah, temperance, balanced energies, angelic that's an angel energy right there you become balanced and you shine your light shines through the darkness your light shines through the flesh and you become i want to say a powerhouse because when we have god with us in the spirit and we recognize these things and we call back all of our lifetimes that we've ever lived and we remember them I don't know if everybody can do that or if any, I don't know. I just did. So I'm saying it's possible. It's possible if you want to. You probably already have in dreams, uh, in, in, you know, day visions and stuff like that. But the whole, the whole key, what you want to do is balance your dark side with your light side. And your dark side is the elementals. It is the earth the air, the water, and the fire within you. Okay, your fire is your passion. That anger sometimes you feel, that's passion. Do not put that passion out. Let your anger burn. Let it burn and let it burn away the, the, the things that don't need to be there that you can see. And you want to use your water, your voice. You want to speak out what's in your heart. Even if it hurts, put it on paper. You don't want to tell people anything? Okay, fine, I understand that. I've got a hundred notebooks where I have been writing for these long, long years of everything that I've ever felt in my life. And I released it. 
so that I could think about it and understand it. And that is how we begin to come out of our darkness. Our darkness is our flesh, our bones, our guts. That's our darkness. All of our internal organs are an entity. Our heart is an entity. Our brain is an entity. Our liver is an entity. They all have glands. They're attached to our chakras, okay? They're attached to our chakras. That's my little baby. I want to take this. Three of wands. You see her looking out over the depths, the ocean. Do you see those waves? Well, she wants to catch one of those waves. And she is watching, even in the dark, you see? She's looking, it's dark. But she has light and fire all around her. Begin with your fire. Your fire is your anger. Anger is a part of your dark side. Explore it. Let it happen. You get angry, you're alive. Woohoo, fire's going. Yeah, speak what's on your mind. If you can't speak out to people, stand in front of the mirror and talk. I had to do that. Stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself because it is yourself you're working with, right? You're working with yourself. You want to know who you are beneath your flesh. What is in you? What is it that keeps you um, upset, depressed, angry, frustrated, anxious, fearful, you know, what are you afraid of? Explore your anger first. Let it burn away. Let it burn so you can see and look at it. Look at what you're mad at. It's the only way that, you know, you can, you know, you want to live a life of exuberance, excitement. You want to feel good and passionate. You want to have interest that you want to follow you know you whatever it is don't matter me i love god i love spirit i love you know i love to see good things happening on this planet i don't watch fake news i don't uh involve myself in matters that really don't involve me i try to keep my mind fresh and clear and pray about the things that i cannot control and that's the only thing that I can do. Yep. And so as I move through life day by day, exploring what's going on in my life, there, which is a lot of stuff going on in my life, many, many different uh, projects, uh, it gives me different levels that I can play on through the day, which keeps me entertained and, you know, excited about life. And so, but this didn't happen for a long time. I was depressed and sad, going through separation, uh, feeling uh, unworthy of you know anything. And so I had to go down and get really angry and light up things so that I could sort through why was I angry? Um, how can I come out of this and be happy? Because that's what we all want, right? We want to be happy. Say that, I want to be happy, right? We want to be happy. Yes, look at this. We want to be this. We want to be sitting in front of the stairway to heaven. We want to be happy. We want to be at peace. Need I say more? Need I say more? And first, you got to look at the cause that is causing, you know, all these things will bring about the same thing. Fear, anger, anxiety, um, jealousy, grief, apathy. We have to identify the fear, the state of our condition. We have to identify the state of our condition so that we can go in and look at the things within us in the dark through the light of our anger because we want to get things sorted out. We're going in, we're pissed off, we're going to fix it, and that's just the way it is. 
And that's how we look at it. And that's how I looked at it. And I grabbed my notebook and I said, I am not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to sit here and cry about things that have happened in my life when I have a life ahead of me. And this has just been in the last five years. Right? And now I am happy. I'm growing gardens. I'm flowing through my house. I don't pay attention to to outside forces. And if they do bring their attention to me, then I'm going to put it on them in truth. I'm going to speak my truth, right? And so they're not going to bring themselves to my attention because I'm going to talk about the truth that's going on in their life, how it's disturbing mine. And a lot of people don't like to be exposed like that. But I am an exposer. I walk in the light. I'm going to shine the light right on it. And that's just the way it is, whether they like it or not. I don't care. Boom. You see there? I'm on the other side of the mountain. I got my bags packed and I'm moving forward. And that's what you need to be doing too. You pack up your bags. You take that good with you, what you love, and you leave the rest of it behind. She's traveling pretty light to be crossing the world, but she got her mule. That's her willpower, right? Oh. She got her ox. That is willpower. And she's forcing herself through. And she got what she needs. And that's all. She got her buddy, her best friend. You know what? That's darkness, ain't it? Look at that. Willpower is the darkness. The ox. The ox is the wild willpower. It pushes through. You ain't gonna stop no ox. And that's why I'm saying, get in touch with your dark side. Get in touch with your anger. Am I saying break things, throw things apart? No, what I'm saying is go within yourself bravely. You know how when you get mad, you're brave? Well, get mad and be brave and start exploring your own soul and bring out the pain. Take it out of you and learn to live the way you want to live, however that is. Whether you want to live out loud or whether you live, want to live in peace or whether you want to think, you know, like um, I've got to a place where there's nothing but good in my mind. I don't think that anymore. And if somebody puts bad in my face, I get right up and speak it. I'd be like, oh, hell no. Not in my house. Not in my heaven. This is my heaven on earth right here in this house. This house is my heaven on earth. And it's going to stay heaven on earth. And so I walk around with a smile and love in my heart. And everybody has smiles and love, I hope, in their hearts. And the meanwhile, uh, people uh, are doing the same as me. They're exploring their dark side. They're cleaning themselves out. They're learning to love themselves in my house. And that is how we live here. We love ourselves. And because we love ourselves, we go in and look at that dark side because that is where our power is. Your flesh, what you've done in the flesh is still within your soul. And you've got to sort anything out that you feel guilty about, anything you're mad about, anything you're anxious about, anything you're afraid of, anything you've ever done that you feel is still with you or, or what others have done to you you, only you and God can go in there and work that out. Nobody else can go into your flesh and look at your life to see what marks are left on it. Only you and God can go in there and work it out. That's the darkness. Don't be afraid of the darkness. Yes, you've been taught to cover it up in blood and pray for forgiveness and leave it alone. It'll be taken care of. Did it? Did it get taken care of? Or did it fester and get worse and worse? And you find yourself that you're in a depression or that you're always mad or that you're always crying or that everything upsets you or that you can't get up in the morning and smile and drink a cup of coffee and praise God that you're alive. Have I always praised God I was alive? No. I have died a thousand deaths in this lifetime. I have lost children. I've lost my parents. Not lost them. I 
walked away from them. I gave up and walked away because I did not like them. And understand, I didn't really like myself either. When I look back, I wish I'd have been a stronger soul. If I'd have been who I am now, back then, I could have understood them. But I didn't because I didn't understand myself. The two years, the year and a half I spent in hermit mode in my bedroom after my separation. And my husband couldn't, he didn't leave, he stayed. And we were separated and I was hurt and I was broken and, or I thought I was. You know, and the Holy Spirit, God, led me through the darkness, led me through it, strengthened my soul, and gave me the gumption to live for myself and not another man or not another person or not another human. Uh, God says, Connie, isn't it time you live for yourself? You've given everything you've got to everybody you've ever loved. <laughs> and it's true. I hardly ever took anything for myself. I gave it to everybody else, wishing, wishing, and hoping that they would love me. Come to find out, ain't nobody going to love you if you don't love yourself. Nobody going to respect you if you don't respect yourself. Nobody going to make you happy if you don't go in and help work on yourself. That's the way life is. And we have been lied to forever and ever and ever about how to find redemption and salvation. Redemption and salvation is through learning who you are. I've met atheists more kinder than some people who believe in God. It's all about knowing who you are. Their parents obviously knew themselves and taught their children how to know themselves. You know, you don't have to praise God every day. All you've got to be is a good person, good enough to love who you are to make your life happy, to feel good about you. And you can only feel good about you if you find out where that anger is coming from and soothe it. What did you learn? It was a lesson, you understand? It's like getting homework and from from your teacher, except your real teacher is the Holy Spirit and God who wants to show you how to have a beautiful life on this planet. I immediately looked over to my flower setting over here, you know, uh, a poetic lifestyle of joy. You know, you've seen it on TV. People live the life, you know. They drink tea out in the backyard while the kids play croquet, you know. <laughs> and yeah, I did. That's what I want. And now I'm beginning to get it. I have flowers everywhere. I have a yard. Will we play croquet? I don't know. But I watch my puppies play, and that's, that makes me happy that they have a yard to play in. You know, I was homeless for 10 years. I planted a flower one time in an abandoned store's flower bed and we lived there for eight months and then we had to move and I cried because I had lived there for eight months they had let us live there in a camper and when I had to move I cried I had to leave my little flower behind and you know all I wanted was a place to be life can be so funny I learned so much during that homeless journey I would not trade it for nothing I called it God's boot camp. And I was strengthened and learned endurance. And, you know, I'd had a very pampered life up till that time. It was, you know, very pampered. And so I got to see both sides. I got to live for 10 years, 15 years, a life of luxury where everything was provided for me except love. I had a material life. It was all good. I didn't have a lot of love. I wasn't loved except by my children. I didn't even know that I wasn't loved because I hadn't been never loved before. And um, so I didn't know how to teach people how to love me, you know? And so I accepted whatever kind of love people thought they would send my way. And 
during the journey of when I went homeless and started walking from Utah to Washington, uh, God started helping me work on my self-esteem. I had gained so much weight. I was 300 pounds. I carried the world around my waist. I felt like I had done everything wrong in my life. Everything. Now I realize I've done everything right. I'd done everything right. I was right not to get attached to material things. I was right to not feel like I needed to work a nine to five job all day or 12 hours a day to support my children. I was a wanderer. I wandered across this planet. I went from place to place. I learned things. I had experiences that some people will never experience. And I cherish everything, everything I ever went through. And that is me accepting and learning from my shadow side. I have accepted it. I, I implemented it into my life and I've learned that through everything I went through made me a powerhouse. That's right. Between me and the Holy Spirit, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. I know how I want to be treated now. And if you don't come at me with respect and love and dignity, you better not come at me at all. And if you're not standing in your truth, psh, you ain't worth my time. I like my flowers and I love my puppy. And that's it. And I love me. I love me. I admire my tenacity and my power to overcome every devil who stepped in my road to chop off their legs and send them back to hell where they come from until God disposes of them. Any devil, any Satan, they better not come my way. I'll eat them. And that's the way you want to be, right? You want to smile and say, I love this world. And ain't no devil coming my way or no Satan because I'll eat him and I'll take that power and turn it into mine own. That's what God says. Eat that sucker. Eat that spirit. They want to mess around and play with you. Eat them up. Gobble, gobble, gobble. I am a turkey. Gobble, 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 gobble. See, I thought I used to have to let those spirits and people and things and souls and devils beat on me and put me down. And God says, that ain't the way life is. We got to stand over those things. Now, I want to bring up Jesus. And then I'm going to go through these cards that fell to the floor. <clears throat> Jesus said before they hanged him, if you slap, if someone, you present your best side to people and you love them and you give them the best and they slap that cheek, you turn to them the other side. Well, you have presented your light to them and they have slapped you. Then you turn this side. And what is this side? This is the left side. This is the side that's going to slap you back. That's right. You slap this side, my nice side, the side that's all loving and kind, well, then you're going to get this side. And this side's going to punch you right in the face with truth, hardcore truth. I'm going to tell you everything about who you are and what you stand for. And when I'm done, you're going to see yourself in a whole new light. Now, the hanged man. Jesus taught me that. That's right, believe it or not. And what does that bring? Well, it brings the Ten of Pentacles. It brings good into your life. When you stand up for yourself and you let people know where they stand too, in case they don't know their place, it makes things good and happy. You set boundaries. You let people know that you're the mother. You raise the children. And it's you who sets the example for the family. You're the magician. And you create what you want in your life. You are the mother. The mother. 
more power in the universe is the mother. She gave birth to everything that was ever born. Goddess of all. And it's time we take our power back and bring this planet back to its good house. Okay, ladies, I love y'all. And yes, I am talking to the ladies. Oh, men too. You have a divine feminine. Yes, and she's beautiful. She's beautiful. But you got to be accepting men. If you want your divine feminine to come in, you got to soften up. You got to search yourselves too. You got to look for your anger. Why are you frustrated? Why are you mad? You mad, bro? <laughs> well, don't be. Find out why. What kind of pain do you have somewhere in you that has hurt you that you're angry? You got to find it. Why are you crying? You got to look through the past, look through what happened in your flesh. Your flesh is crying, not your spirit soul. It's the flesh. The flesh needs attention too. Not sexual attention, love. Good food, good thoughts, good health, good wealth. Your health is your wealth. What you think is, is everything about your daily life. I love you guys. I'll always love you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to close this now. Remember, work on your shadow side. If you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're anxious, if you're lonely, find out why. Because you, you need to love yourself so much that you don't get lonely. Yeah, I don't get lonely. I love myself. I find things to do that keep me occupied. Things that I love, like talking to you. You know, working on my flowers. Here, I see this. Yeah. This is out of my garden. Just one of few. I'd like to show it to you guys every day. I really, really love walking through my garden. It's full of flowers and the bees love them. I go out and watch the honeybees. And it's just, it's, I'm making my own garden of Eden right here around me. And I love everybody that's in my life with all my heart, and they love me. And, you know, I'm just saying it wasn't easy to get here, though. You have to stand in your truth so that others know who you are. And you are the image of God. You are Mother Goddess. You are Mother of this planet. And you need to begin to stand in your strength. We are the good thinkers. We are the lovers of life. Teach your children to love life and who they are and to go through every little ouch they've ever had so that it doesn't get stuck in your flesh. It doesn't get stuck in the spirit and soul. You, you take it with you and review when we die. We review it. I've seen myself on the other side reviewing my past life. I've had these dreams. I am a prophet. I am from God. I went through all this. I understand. I love you guys. God loves you guys. He wants you to be happy. This is not a place of suffering. This is the Garden of Eden. And, and, and it doesn't happen instantly. It's us. We're going to create it. Right? We're going to create it. I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share if you've been helped. God bless you. Bye-bye.